going to be covering um, an HNMR basics tutorial. We're going to use this molecule here, this ester and ether, um, as a way to uh, show basically the four things. Right? It's going to be four things NMR is going to be able to tell us. So the first thing we need to do um, is figure out how many different hydrogens this molecule has. So I'm going to write the, go ahead and write the hydrogens in. All right, so I've drawn in the hydrogens. Now we do this because the first thing NMR actually tells us the first thing it tells us is the number of different H's, chemically non-equivalent hydrogens for proton NMR. So you've got to be able to look at this molecule and say, well, are these hydrogens in a different chemical environment? It means are they near different things? And so in this case, you should be able to recognize, hopefully, and I'll circle these. These are all different hydrogens when I've circled. We can call this A, B, C, D. So there's four different chemically non-equivalent hydrogens in this molecule. So the first thing an MR tells us is the number of chemically non-equivalent hydrogens that we have in a molecule. And it shows us this by using peaks. So we'd expect an NMR spectrum of this molecule to have four peaks. Easy enough. All right, so now the second thing NMR tells us is something about shielding or frequency that the hydrogens come at, the peaks come at. So we have four different peaks, but how do we know, how can we start to tell these peaks apart, A, B, C, and D? Well, one of the ways you can tell them apart, the first way is think about what they're near. So whether, are they shielded um, from the, the radio waves of the NMR or are they de-shielded? So things that are near oxygens or near electronegative things become de-shielded because electron density is pulling away. So in this case, D would be the most shielded, right? Because it's the farthest away from an electronegative element. So it really tells us something about where it's, what kind of atoms these H's are near. So in this case, we could say, well, D is going to be the far, it's going to be uh, the most shielded, so it should be upfield. So that means lower frequency in NMR terms, or lower frequency, or a lot of times we see it as PPM, right? Things that are close to electronegative elements are going to be farther upfield. And this is an additive effect. So let's take a look at C. C and B, right? C feels is really electronegative because of resonance ester. And so that should be around 4.5. And these are the kind of things you'd look at your um, IR frequency and NMR frequency tables that you always have. And B feels both this oxygen and this ester. So this can be pretty far upfield. And then A feels more just this oxygen by itself. So B is kind of getting a double dose. So by itself, if we ignored this part, B would be about 2. But now because of this, there's a 2, and a, this would normally be about 3.5. So maybe, maybe B is around, and this is a guess, maybe B is around 4 ppm. C, those esters, maybe around 4.5 ppm. And then A, I'm going to guess A will probably be around oh, 3.5, let's say. And right, these are just guesstimates, right? D, if I'm going to guess, that's going to be around 1.5 ppm, right? So these are things we can look at our IR tables, but this also, the shielding first gives us an idea about where things might be. We probably won't be able to tell these all apart yet. Maybe we know which one D is because that's the farthest upfield. But these ones that are more de-shielded, that are farther downfield, they're going to be. We're going to need more information. And NMR is going to tell us more things as we go. So first thing we got: number of peaks, different hydrogens. Thinking about what what things are next to those atoms, those hydrogens, whether they're shielded or de-shielded. De-shielded means you're next to an electronegative element. Shielded means you're farther away, and that affects the frequency. Now the next part is going to show us even more information and tell us which hydrogen is which. All right. So the third thing uh, NMR will tell us, proton NMR will tell us is the relative number of hydrogens. This is found by the integration of the area underneath the peak. So we're starting to see this picture come alive here, maybe. Let's just draw a, a spectrum. Right? We knew we have four peaks. So we have four peaks. Right? So that, that was for number one. Number two told us maybe where these peaks are at. So I'm not, this is just a general, where some might be farther downfield, some might be farther upfield. But then number three is going to tell us actually how big these peaks should be based on the relative number um, of the hydrogens in the molecule. So in this case, the ratio should be, if we go in this order, A, B, C, 
D, there should be three A's, two B's, two C's, and three D's. That should be the relative ratio of the peaks that we're seeing for these molecules. So the peak for A and D, the area underneath that peak, should be relatively the same as D. A and D show the same relative area underneath the peak, and B and C show the same relative area in the peak. All right, so that's what this is going to tell us a little bit more. Now we can differentiate between maybe some of these based on this. And the last part is really going to take it to another level when we think about coupling constants and actual splitting. And I'll, finally, I'll finalize with a big picture of the whole thing. All right, so the last and final thing Anamar tells us is going to go to our complete picture. It tells us something about the coupling or splitting. So what this has to do with, this tells us what hydrogens are actually close to each other, are three bonds away from each other. So just to take a step back, the first thing it told us, the number of chemically non-equivalent hydrogens, so in this case we'd have four peaks, we have four different types. Shielding tells us which those, what atoms those hydrogens are near. If they're electronegative and electrons drawing, they'll be de-shielded and farther downfield. If they're farther from the electronegative atoms, like D, they'll be farther upfield. The third thing NMR tells us, the relative number of hydrogens for each peak, and this is found by the integration of those peaks, and the relative ratio for this case was A3, B2, C2, D3. So those here under those peaks for A and D should be the same, and same with B and C. Now, finally, to, really, to differentiate these, we have something called coupling. So which hydrogens are near each other, are three bonds away? So in this case, D and C are one, two, three bonds from each other. Think of these as bells. These bells are ringing and they can hear each other. If they're close enough away, they can hear each other. If they can hear each other, they're gonna affect each other. So if you're three bonds away, you're gonna affect each other. So if I'm thinking of C, in this case, C has how many nearest neighbors? Well, how many hydrogens are three bonds away? There's one, two, three. So for C, it's going to have three nearest neighbors, three plus one, that equals four. And what that means is it's going to be a quartet. It's going to be split up into a quartet. All these peaks, they all start out as singlets. And then depending on who they can hear, who's three bonds away, they become split. They become coupled. All right, so C, in this case, will actually be a quartet. Well, what about D? Well, in D's perspective, how many nearest neighbors does D have? It has two, one, two. So for D, you can have two plus one, and that's going to be a three, which we call a triplet. It's going to be split into three peaks. So D and C are splitting each other. And the way they split each other, the actual number, how far apart these peaks are, so if C looks like this, Right. And D looks like this. So this was C. This was D. The way these are coupled, the splitting difference here, this value is called the coupling constant. And that's found in hertz. And that's the same. If something's coupled to each other, they have the same coupling constant. So let's say in this case it was 7 hertz. So one of the ways we know these two are coupled to each other is because they have the same coupling constant. Also notice, the way I drew, drew these, if you think about the integrations, C, as we said before, should represent two H's, and D should represent three H's. So D, notice how I made this peak a little bit bigger. So that tells us something, that one's D, and this one's C. Now what about A and B? Well, the question for A and B is, do they have any nearest neighbors? Do they have any hydrogens at three, bond away, three bonds away? Well, one, two, three, four. Four bonds away is not the same, too far away. So that and B, one, two, three, four, five, nope. So poor A and B can't hear anybody else. So they will be singlets. They're not being split at all. So I'm going to put this all together and see what a picture would look like on actual spectrum now. All right, so let's put this all together. Now, of course, this is just a guesstimate. This isn't an actual NMR. I'm, you know, this could actually be different, but this is just a way for us to think about this. So let's do with the most shielded thing, which was D as far as this up field. And we said D our calculations would be a triplet worth three hydrogens. So let's draw in D. So that would be the lowest down here. So this is for D. That's worth three hydrogens. And you said that right, right around 1.5 ppm. Now we also had C. We said C be around 4.5. So C be down here. And C we said was going to be a quartet worth one worth two hydrogens. So that's C. 
worth at about 4.5 worth two hydrogens. And we talked about these C and D having this coupling constant in Hertz that told us that they were coupled to each other. Let's do C, or we already did C, excuse me. Let's do B, so what would B be? B is a singlet, B has no nearest neighbors. B is a singlet worth two hydrogens. We said B be around four, so there's B, around four ppm. We said B was worth two hydrogens. And then finally we have C, or excuse me, A, which is also a singlet, but it's worth, you know, around 3.5 ppm, we guessed, but it's worth three hydrogens. This kind of puts it all together. So to wrap it up, it tells us the number of peaks, numbered chemically non equivalent hydrogens, this case had four. Shielding tells us whether what kind of atoms is near, upfield or downfield. D shielded makes it downfield, upfield has lower numbers. D shielded things are near electronegative atoms. Tells us the relative number of hydrogens, the integration, tells us something about the area underneath these peaks, right, those integrations. And then finally, coupling tells us who's near each other, who's three bonds away, who can hear each other, who's going to couple each other. And that n plus rune one rule, where the number of hydrogens three bonds away is n, so you get quartet and triplet. And then we can tell who's coupled to each other by this coupling constant.